Hi everybody, Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School. And today we're going to be doing a little tutorial on HDR and how to create HDR images. Um, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range and basically what this means is that it's going to go get the details out of the highlights and out of the shadows of your image. Now to do that you need to take multiple images. You need to take multiple photos of the same scene at different exposures. Now what I suggest you do just to basically start off is to take three exposures. One that's Two, two stops under, one properly exposed, and one that's two stops uh, over. And that way you'll have a nice range of, uh, um, of exposure and it'll create a, a fairly decent HDR. Of course, if you want to be really, really nitpicky, you can go and take f five or seven at, uh, images at a increments of, of uh, one, one uh, stop under, et cetera, et cetera. But you need a minimum of three to be able to do an HDR image, all right? So let's start off. I've taken my three raw files of this cathedral in Ottawa, and I've imported them into Camera Raw. And uh, basically, what I'm going to do now is just click on this button here called Select All, and it'll select our three images that we've imported into Adobe Camera Raw. And all we'll do, we won't tweak anything here. We're just going to uh, click Open Image. And those three images uh, will be opened as raw files in uh, Photoshop. Now I'm using CS3 here, so uh, CS4 should be about the same. Um, this uh, merged to HDR that I'll be showing you, uh, I think, was introduced uh, in CS2. I might be wrong, but uh, if you have an older version, check it out. All right, we got our three images in. We see our overexposed image, um, and then we have the other two in the back. Now, the next step is to go to File, Automate, and the second to last down, Merge to HDR. And this dialog box will appear. Now, we want to use the files. And what's great, there's a little button option here that's, that says Add Open Files. Just click that, and it'll, uh, it'll add the open files in Photoshop. And what you can do is also click this button here called Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. Just in case they might be a little bit off uh, well, if you weren't using a, a remote trigger and your, your finger moved the camera while you were pressing the shutter button, um, your images might be just a tad off and this will align them properly. All you need to do after that is click OK and then it will create your uh, HDR image. All right, This will take a while and I'll just edit it in... Uh, right after so uh, you don't get all the, the waiting time. All right, once it's done, and take, depending on the size of the file that you have and the speed of your computer, it can take a few minutes. So once you have that done, this dialog box appears. And basically, uh, this is where you're going to be converting your HDR image. You can see the different exposures here. And uh, here is my image right in the middle here. Now you can uh, select a white point. If you find the image slightly overexposed, you can bring it down a little bit. And uh, what, what's important now before we click on OK is to select 16 bits um, because 13 bits is just way too much. All right, So you want to create a 16-bit image so that it can be converted after that into a JPEG or whatever other format. All right, Let's click on OK. And uh, what's great about that is once you've selecting, selected the 16-bit, uh, another dialog box will appear in Photoshop uh, so that we can actually adjust our HDR image. Boom, there you go. And there's the dialog box called HDR conversion. Now, if I click on the, if your uh, toning curve and histogram isn't up, just click on this little arrow here and it'll show it. Now, as you can see, I can't edit this right now, and you're, you're probably wondering, well, what's the point? Well, what we need to do is go into the Method dialog box and select Local Adaptations, the last one down. And your image will change a little bit in the background. Now, let me just move that to the side a little bit so we can see what we're doing. 
Already, just like this, we can see the details coming back into uh, the stained glass. We get the details into the shadow areas. We can see all those gold spots on the ceiling, which we, which we weren't seeing before. But now we, what we can do is tweak it. Now what we need to do, if you look at the histogram here, it's, it's, pretty not, it's not bad. Sometimes when you're going to be taking nature shots and you're going to have a very, very blown out sky, you won't have any information in this area here. So you'll have to tweak that. And I'm missing some information here. So I'm going to drive my shadow point up to the beginning of the histogram. And uh, I would do that for the, the white, the, the highlight point as well, but we already have all the details here, you can see. Um, so I won't even touch that one there. Now, uh, you can play a little bit with the threshold. I like to keep it at around 1. If you, if you remove it, it kind of makes the image a lot flatter. And if you bring it all the way there, it gives it a lot of detail. Now, actually a little too much for my taste. It's starting to look a little bit too cartoony for this image. I like it around 1, one and 1 1.5. You get the details, but it's not, uh, it doesn't look fake. And all you need to do is click OK. Or you can actually go and play with the curve inside as well and lighting, lightening it up or darkening it up as you view fit. As you, yeah, that's it. Click OK. All right, that took a few seconds, but that's not so bad. And we have our final HDR image right here. Now you can see that we got some details in the shadow areas up here. Um, the stained glass detail is all there. The, the glass isn't blown out white. So um, I'm pretty happy with this. Now what we can do is go tweak it some more um, with curves or any other option. I can do uh, a duplicate layer and take that, that duplicate layer and put it into soft light mode and then play with the opacity a little bit, get a before and after punch to it. Or we can simply go into image adjustment curves or control M and then tweak it a little bit like that. A little darker, give it more of a moody feeling. I think there's a little bit too much red in there for me, so I'll go into my red channel and bring that down, bring some blues back in there, or some cyan. There, I like this like that. And there you go. We got our cathedral inside. We can see all the details. If we look at this HDR image and this properly uh, exposed image, you can see that it's lacking a lot of details. Uh, it's even a little too dark and this came up and cleared it right up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an HDR image in Photoshop without using any other software like Photomatix. Alright, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.